in Glencoe, folks, who would have thought. And what I thought I'd show is, I get asked a lot about the Ralston Memorial, how to get to it. So I'm at the Three Sisters, you can see behind me over there. And what I'm going to do is show you how to get up to the memorial, how to find the cairn. Um, and get some pictures for yourself. I don't know if we're going to get any nice light, it's, it is a little bit strange. But we might get some nice light, who knows, we'll wait and see. So anyway, I'm parked here at the spot, I'll show you on the map later on how to get here. And we're just going to walk on this path up. You can see the car in the distance there, there we go. Just walking up this path, let me just follow me around. You see this, with these sisters behind me. Up that path. So we're just going to go up here, and the memorial is just up there, but you can't see it from here. So when we get a little bit closer, I'll show you what the exact path is. But from where you park the car, or wherever you get around the corner, you walk up this path, and you just carry on up this path up here to get to where we need to go. Okay, so we're just going to follow this path up here. It's fairly easy, a bit boggy at times, but you just follow this up there. So this is the spot where most people will get lost. But once you come around these bits to see these rocks, if you look up there, you see there's, did you see there's a little structure up there, that little building, that house, that's what you should use as your base of sort of navigation. But if you go up these rocks now, just here, and just come around a little bit, so you'll see here, if I just follow that path up, there's actually a little path up there that takes you all the way up to the top for the Ralston Care. So, we'll just go up that way now. So this is quite an easy walk, but you just have to watch out again, because there might be some uneven rocks and so on. But... I'm just going to climb up here. It's obviously very windy. But if I can show you the view up here just now. That's the view back there just now down the valley. And we're just going to climb up these rocks just to get up there. Where a couple of my friends are sitting there. Okay. So there's kind of a marked path. It's not the most obvious to see, but it does kind of keep you right. And if you just follow that up, there's a bit of a steep climb. We'll just get us up here and see. Just a wee bit more to go. And we'll be rewarded for this little last climb. There's obviously great views in every direction, but if it is the cairn you're after, it is the way. And after that little bit, we just come down this path and show you. The tripod down. There we go. There's the Ralston Cairn and that iconic view down the valley. We're getting some lovely light there in the valley. Just waiting it to nicely light up more of the edge of that valley. Just those trees down in the distance there. And I've set my typical composition up that I've done before at the scene because I think it works really well. I've got that in my foreground, the cairn, the cross sitting at the intersection with the mountain, one of the sisters. So rather than cutting the mountain up the top or further down, I've got it sitting right on the edge of this line here of that mountain because I think it works extremely well. So it's just simply a case of sitting here, waiting for the light. I've got a couple of ND filters on the front of it. You can see there, so I've got uh, a 0.6 hard grad and a 0.6 um, soft grad. That just various parts of that image, just to balance it out, because it is extremely bright. And settings-wise, 
I have it on manual F14. That's about the sweet spot for this particular lens I'm using. It's quite a wide angle, 128, which is about 17 mil full frame. And uh, one thirtieth of a second, I'm just bracketing my exposures as well on either side. Although I don't need to, but just to be on the safe side. So I'm just waiting for the light to right up the side of that valley just to get that shot. And then I think I'll get the long lens out and do some really close up details of that, of that hillside because it's looking extremely well just now. Back in 2015, on New Year's Eve, I received an unexpected email from someone named Trevor, who had decided to get in touch after seeing my image of the Ralston Cairn, which I had photographed many times over the past. Back then, it was becoming quite a popular spot for photographs, and I would notice a lot of traffic to the pages on my website with those images, presumably from people searching for more information behind the cairn. But until that email, I had been none the wiser to the story behind it. Trevor was kind enough to share the story with me and also allow me to share it for others who had been inquiring. The cairn is in memory of Ralston Cloud Muir, who was Trevor's brother and who died at the age of 32. He loved to climb in the glen and he was a train driver on the West Highland Line. Ralston died on the 10th of January 2000, very suddenly, after taking unwell on Christmas Day. He died from multiple organ failure caused by a rare form of leukaemia, which he never knew he had. Trevor says he would have loved the attention and the photos of the spot and commented how good it was that in some way his memories kept going by all the images of the cairn being taken. He certainly would have enjoyed all the attention. All his friends still visit the cairn and have a wee drum with him. The words on the cairn are even more fitting after hearing the story behind it. And my visits since have always had a more heartfelt appreciation for all things. I had arranged to send a print of the image to Trevor so that he could have an image of his own to treasure, but by the time the print was delivered to him, it had taken on yet another meaning. The print eventually got delivered to Trevor after a series of unforeseen delays on the 28th of January, which unbeknown to me was the day of Ralston's birthday. Having the photo arrive by sheer coincidence on that particular day certainly was an emotional moment. The next time you visit the Cairn, or even if you go for the first time in future, be sure to think of Ralston and how this Cairn has become an inspiration for many photographs and will no doubt continue to do so. Just thinking back on something a friend of mine said to me uh, recently about Glencoe and you're always there <laughs> every other day it's like well let's go up to Glencoe um, and I get asked this a lot I suppose when I go around to camera clubs giving talks on my works uh, why Glencoe why do I seem to come back here so often um, even though it's, it's not it's not right next door to me to the house it's, it's accessible but it's still a good two and a half three hour drive but why Glencoe of all places and I think it's simply a case of the, the attraction of this place. I mean, people will fly over the world 
all over Scotland, England, they'll, they'll come all over and drive through the night, nine hours, whatever it takes to come up here and visit Glencoe on their way to Skye, but Glencoe's always a stop. Why is that? I mean, it's just, it's a drama and the mood of the place. It's, it's hard to describe, but when you're up here, and this isn't even on the top of a mountain, we're just, you know, at this popular spot that I come to quite a lot, and you look at the view and you look at the, the light, the drama, the mystery, it's never, it's never the same. Um, we were here two days ago, completely different today. Uh, and I'll come here again in two days if I, if I get the chance and it'll be completely different again. And I think that's what the attraction is of such a place. Uh, today I came here to have a look at the Ralston Mem Memorial again. We're here, why not? Why not have a look? Um, took some few shots on the wide angle vistas and then the light was dancing down the valley and I put the long lens on and I was just focusing on some of the trees in the valley, some of the hills. Something completely different. But you have that option here in Glencoe. Yeah, sometimes you'll come and it'll be absolutely peeing it down. Um, it'll be cold, it's cold and windy today, but you get so invigorated when you get some great pictures, you get some great dramatic light, and you just, before you know it, you've forgotten that your fingers were cold or you haven't eaten or you're just, you know, you just want to go home, just want to get the heating on in your car. And I think that's what makes it worthwhile. I'll, I can't think that I'll never not keep coming back to Glencoe. It's just the, the drama of the place, you know, the attraction of it. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, well, at least I hope not because I do love coming here, is it's thinking about the story of Ralston Cloud Muir, his memorial this is, especially after his brother shared the story with me. And you realise that life is short, you know. Go out there, take the pictures, visit those places, not I'll do it tomorrow, today, if you get the chance. You never know, you know, life may be short, you never know what's around the corner. Enjoy your photography, enjoy going out taking pictures, forget about entering competitions, forget about winning competitions, whether anybody likes them or not, does it really matter? As long as you enjoyed the process of going out and taking the pictures, surely nothing's more important. You know, yes, the recognition is nice from your peers, from your friends, from your family, but just coming out, being out here, whatever the conditions, even though I'm not an avid hill walker, just going out taking pictures and just being out in this kind of landscape, you know, it's, it's just something about it. And I only really got that passion when I got into photography, and I'm really glad I did. And um, I hope to continue sharing my images with you. Hope that you like them. You don't have, if you don't, you know, I just can't help that. Um, hopefully keep sharing what I can when people want me to share. Um, I hope we just sit back and enjoy some of the stunning views like this. See ya.